is Academic Decathlon, worksheet number seven. And here we're dealing with functions. So uh, functions are relationships between inputs and outputs. And um, they are very similar, similar to linear equations where we're going to input a value and we're going to get an output. So this is my input. And this is my output. Very similar to domain and range, uh, independent, dependent, x, y, whole bunch of things. So we're going to take this equation. And where we see x, we're going to substitute negative 4. So it's just saying, hey, instead of writing x, we're going to write negative 4. And then we're going to simplify. And we get y, or my output, is 19. So that's a, that's a relationship. It's a re whoa. That's a relationship between an input and an output. And when it's a function, <clears throat> for every input, there's only one output, one unique output. So when we input negative 4, we're always going to get 19 as our output. So... That's the difference between linear equations and functions. Now, these are linear, so uh, we may get uh, different outputs for each input. But when we move to functions, we would expect that to be the case. So we're going to plug in 0. And then we're going to simplify. And we get 0 plus 7, y equals 7. So when we input 0, my output's going to be 7. That's all we're doing. We're just changing the inputs. We're going through a succession of inputs. And we're simplifying the equation. And we're going to get a common denominator, and we'll show that step. Always nice to show our work. And that gives us 11 halves. y equals negative 3 times 1 twelfth plus 7. Here, since we have what we're multiplying uh, uh, fractions, we're always going to reduce before we multiply and that's just efficient math there. We'll always want to do the least amount of work. We're going to change this into fourths, and that would be 28 fourths, and that leaves us with 27 fourths. Now we can leave it as an improper fraction because Nothing's improper about an improper fraction. Now, it needs to be reduced, but converting from an improper to a mix is not simplifying or reducing. That's converting. All right, we're still on our last, one of our last few. This is a crazy problem, but good because you should get used to working with unusual numbers. So this is outside, this is inside the radical, so they are unlike, they're not <clears throat> the same. So when we multiply them, we get this, and that is going to be our answer. That cannot be simplified. That's a whole number. This is a radical or an irrational number, so you can't combine those. And now this is a good one. I like this. So notice this time they're giving the value for y. So we're going to substitute in for y and solve for x. So very good problem. I like this because it sees if students are paying attention to which variable you're solving for. And this time we're solving for the input when provided the output. All right, now we're dealing with functions. How do I know it's functions? Because it says g of x, that's function notation. And we see what is g of zero. So what is my output 
when my input is zero. That's all that's saying. So you say g of zero equals, it's a horrible zero, sorry, when three minus five times the square root of zero. So g of zero equals three minus square root of zero is zero. g of zero equals we're going to multiply negative 5 times 0, which is 0. And so we get g of 0 equals 3. So when my input is 0, my output's going to be 3. We want to find g of 1. We're not multiplying in between there. That's a notational parenthesis. And we're going to simplify the radical first, if we can. In this case, we can. The square root of 1 is 1. And now we are going to do orders of operations. We're going to multiply negative 5 times 1, which is negative 5. So g of 1 equals negative 2. g of 4. So I'm going to input 4 this time. 3 minus 5 times the square root of 4. Again, we're going to simplify that radical square root of 4 is 2, and then we're going to do orders of operation. We're going to do this multiplication, and then we'll do the subtraction. g of 9. Notice all these outputs at this to this point are perfect squares, so it makes simplifying a little bit easier. Square root of 9 is 3. g of 9 equals 3 minus 15. g of 9 equals negative 12. Ah, I like this. So 16 25ths. So g of 16 25ths equals 3 minus 5 times the square root of 16 25ths. Many students would try to convert this to a, a, to a decimal. That would be bad. No need. That would be unnecessary. You're running away from what is the easy work here. Um, when we have radicals, when they're multiplying or dividing, we can separate them into their own radicals. We can break those radicals down. And we like 16 and 25 because they're perfect squares. So that's minus 5 times, so the square root of 16 is 4, square root of 25 is 5. And now we're going to multiply these two, and I'm not going to, I'm going to cross cancel. So g of 16 25ths equals 3 minus 1, oh, that's a 1 down there, so it's actually 3 minus 4. And then g of 16 25ths equals negative 1. All right, not bad, right? Let's show the canceling of 1. 5 goes into 5 once. 5 goes into 5 once. You have negative 1 times 4 is negative 4. That's what's going on there. 9 25ths, so g of 9 25ths equals 3 minus 5 times the square root of 9 25ths, we again will separate those instead of turning it into a decimal. It's just easier because we notice that those are two perfect squares. We should know our perfect squares, a handful of perfect cubes, um, and that's going to be 3 times 3 over 5. We again can cancel, and we get 3 minus 3. So g of 9 over 25 equals 3 minus 3. Oh, this, this pen, I'm very lazy with my pen tonight. g of 9 25 equals 0. It's a good one. Ooh, I like this. So now new equation. Now we have the opposite of x cubed. Notice no parentheses here. So we're going to do x cubed first and then attach the negative. So when we have f of negative 3, we have the opposite of negative 3 cubed plus 7. We 
create these parentheses because there's a negative that we need included. That negative is included because that's part of the base. That's what my input. So that equals negative 3 to the third. There's my cube that I was talking about needing to know. Negative 3 to the third is negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3, which is negative 27. Now we're going to multiply these that negative 1 times negative 27, which gives me 27 plus 27, f of negative 3 equals 34. f of negative 2 equals the opposite of negative 2 cubed plus 7. f of negative 2 equals the opposite. Negative 2 cubed is negative 8 plus 7, f of negative 2 equals, that's positive 8, plus 7, f of negative 2 equals 15. f of 1 half equals the opposite of 1 half cubed plus 7. 1 half equals the opposite of now, one half to the third is one half times one half, one half, or distributing, that's one cubed over two cubed, which is one eighth. One half equals negative one eighth, and seven and eighths would be 56 eighths, or we could have just done six and uh, seven eighths, but we'll do f of one half equals 55 eighths which is equal to 6 and 7 eighths, but we'll leave it like that. Being consistent, f of 2 equals the opposite of 2 to the third plus 7. I don't necessarily need parentheses because just the, the parentheses will go around the 2, but that would be redundant. That's the same notation because this negative is not attached to the 2 at the moment. We would cube and then negative. So that actually ends up being that. That's why they do this problem. This is a really good problem to see if students know what the base of this exponent. The base of this exponent is 2, because that's what we input in. f of 3 equals the opposite of 3 cubed plus 7. f of 3 equals negative 27 plus 7. f of 3 equals negative 20. Ooh, I like this. Well, I kind of like it, but it's challenging. It's squared, so important to see that. That is square root of 2 cubed plus 7. So let's talk about what that is equal to. Do you know that it's 2 rad 2 plus 7? Because if we have the square root of 2 times the square root of 2 times the square root of 2, well, these two pop out. And then we have that one more, so that's why. And then we brought down the negative. And now we can't add those together, so that's your answer. All right. Uh, again, this is similar to the last one in that first set of uh, functions is this time we're going to substitute 71 in for f of x. So f of x. So we're going to say 71 equals the opposite of x cubed plus 7. So we'll subtract 7 first. We get um, 64 equals the opposite of x to the third. We have an isolated x, so we'll have to divide by negative 1. Negative 64 equals x cubed. And now we're going to take the cube root. So we have to actually write a cube in there. We have to take the cube root because that's what gets rid of a cube. So what number times itself equals negative 64? I think that's negative 4. So x would, so f of x, so what is my input? Negative 4 would give me uh, 71. <clears throat> cool. Interesting. Tough problem. Good, good question. Good last problem. So hopefully you understand that. Come and see me if you have questions.